Thank you very much. Uh, I will continue, although we called Rome transportation. I don't know any Romanian, so I will uh, speak only in English. I hope you forgive me. We are welcoming you to Bucharest, which is the uh, European champion for congestion, for air pollution, and uh, among the leading in population reduction. Uh, reduction is actually people moving to Ilfov, but in Bucharest, uh, the, the, the population is, is uh, decreasing. So I guess uh, it is a good selection of uh, location for the conference. Why Bucharest need a SUMP? We, we heard before that this is a precondition for financing. So I understand that we prepare a SUMP, put it on the shelf, we have a financing and then we do what we want. But I think Bucharest specifically need a SUMP to survive. This is my belief. We have vision, we have goals, we have objectives in the reports, we will present them. But basically, to be, to be blunt, Bucharest, if it wants to survive, it needs it need a, a good sump. And I will be more blunt later. So in order to, to make some comparison, uh, we selected to compare Bucharest, which is the European Championship in, 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 in leading in, in some bad examples, to Copenhagen, which many consider as a very good example, has won many, many prizes for being a most sustainable city in some, in some years, competing with some others, but let's compare Bucharest and, and uh, Copenhagen. Uh, let's talk about congestion. As I said, Bucharest is leading in, is the most congested European city. This is according to a TomTom uh, GPS company in 19... Uh, in, in 2014, after reviewing 600 cities worldwide, Bucharest was winning by far the most congested European city. There are more congested cities in the world. Moscow is number one, Istanbul. Uh, we will reach there soon. Don't worry. Uh, it will take time because Bucharest is moving slowly and getting more and more congestion. Uh, and the congestion is worse in the evening and especially in Friday evening. This is based on trillions of data points this company is collecting. You can go to their website and see the ranking of all these 600 cities worldwide and the data collected and, and exactly the, the speeds. This congestion index saying what is the additional amount of time needed on the average to complete a trip versus the same trip uh, in, in non-peak or, or in, let's say, in, in evening time or, or late night time when the, the roads are free. And uh, in, on the average, in Bucharest, 84% of the time is lost on, on average trip just because of the congestion, where in, in, uh, you can see in Copenhagen, less than half. At the same time, Copenhagen, having the same population of Bucharest, they increased the population since 1990, while Bucharest decreased the population. So, another, another issue before I, I continue this comparison is to say that this congestion is one of the reasons, and, and, and another factor, that we have relatively low mobility rate uh, in, in Bucharest comparing to other European cities. So, average number of trips per person per day in Bucharest Ilfov area uh, is relatively low and, and partially, partially is not only, partially is attributed to the uh, congestion, partially is attributed also to the uh, low economic uh, uh, income of some of the population uh, residents. Again, we can talk about model shares, compare Bucharest and Copenhagen and, and the obvious thing is of course the bicycle. What I want to say is that if you take these two uh, graphs and see why Bucharest is putting much more emphasis on car while uh, Copenhagen is more on NMT, non-motorized transport, what I can tell you from this comparison is that policy works. This is exactly the result of the policy. In Bucharest, it was a policy, it is a policy to give priority to cars. It works, definitely. I will show you. And in Copenhagen, it is a policy to give priority to NMT, and it works. Why? Look at, the, look at the, the, some attributes, okay? In land use, we don't have yet integrated plan of land use and transport in Bucharest. Let me tell you, we are now doing the SUMP while there is a PUG, a general plan of land use uh, for Bucharest, which will be completed in two years from now or a year from now. So we are not in coordination, okay? It's just an example. While if you look at the Copenhagen 
organization of, of city, you see the transit-oriented development structure. In urbanization, we heard about city party. This is a, a probably a, a very condensed event that somebody prepared. This is the way of life in Copenhagen. They decided 30 years ago that the city will have a continuous party life. So they, they live in the street. It's activity in the street. Streets are for people, not for cars. So, and and they, they make happening in the streets all the time. This is a, a policy. Car restraint. Do you know, can you imagine that they had a vote and they decided in Copenhagen to reject a massive plan of arterial roads in, and, and they preferred this NMT plan for 30 years ago, okay? Can you imagine this? Somebody is preparing, uh, offering you to make a, a, a very extensive road network, highways, freeways in Bucharest. They said, no, 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 we want uh, bicycle lanes. I, I don't think it is possible yet, but maybe. Parking. They had a, a very clear policy to reduce at least 3% of the on-street parking spaces every year. Uh, what is the situation in Bucharest? The policy? It is a policy. Don't, don't think it's not a policy. It is a clear policy. Uh, it is to give almost free parking to everybody, everywhere, unlimited, as much as you want, double parking, triple parking, no problem. It's a policy, and it works. Since I don't have time, I will skip this, but what I wanted to show here is that actually, when people are young, the students here are still using public transport, they're still using NMT, but when they're getting older, and they start to work, and they're moving to cars. And this is the policy that works here. So, we have a model. We, we, we developed a model, and the model can show you what will happen under business as usual uh, in uh, 15 years from now. But what I wanted to say is the following. We, we don't need models to prepare SUMP. Actually, models sometimes is a, is a problem. I heard uh, some speakers before saying, oh, we have a model, the model will solve the problem. No, the model is not solving the problem. Sometimes models create a problem because when you have a model, you think the model is, is something that you should adhere to. Ken Livingstone, when, they, when he introduced the congestion pricing in London, he didn't use a model. Singapore, when they introduced their congestion pricing, they didn't use a model. Copenhagen, when they rejected the, the, the arterial road plan, they didn't need a model. They, they had a policy. What we lack, not only in Romania, but especially in Romania, is decision makers to make policy and to make a decision. Not we, we, that we lack models. Models can support them if they want. But this is not the issue of modeling. We have models, but and, and, and everything I'm going to say now is not something new that nobody knows without our model or without the, the 100 experts that uh, our is bringing on board. They don't need the experts. They know this, the, 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 the situation. That just the, somehow the, the policy of the decision makers is, is different. So we are now. Uh, uh, under the, the final stages of the preparation of the SUMP for Bucharest Info, the first thing, as, as I said, is to make sure that we have a policy. Somebody needs to adapt a policy. We, we can make measures, we can propose uh, interventions, we have plenty of them, we have many, many of them, and, and they, they may cost from a few millions to a few billions. It is not a problem to identify, prioritize, and and, and provide measures. Somebody just needs to adopt a policy. A policy not only about transport, urban transport policy, but also about integrated land use and transport policy and urbanization. This is so somebody that needs to do. Then we should adapt and implement short-term uh, uh, strategy. Now, in this presentation, I will focus on short-term, uh, not because uh, long-term are not important, but first, because I don't have time. Actually, I run out of time. And second, because I believe that, uh, and I know actually, that transport technology now is changing. The transport that we know now will not be the same in 20 or 30 years, in many ways. Not the personal transport, not the cars technology, not the public transport technology, not even the people technology. And what I want to do in the short term, there are many things that one can do in the short term. Let's focus on the following three. First, immediately, immediately, plan, Adapt and implement a dedicated and safe and attractive bicycle network. 
very easy. We prepare some preliminary, this is the first time we, we show it, it's still not final, but uh, it is a fraction of a cost of a metro line. You can do much more than these 200 kilometers of, of bicycle lanes. Safe, dedicated, guarded, attractive, with parking facilities, uh, easy. And it can be done not only in 20 years, it can be done in two years, if, if you want. Maybe we can show a small movie why we need this, uh, please. So, you can see in the peak hour morning, if you use bicycles, you can be faster than cars, definitely. But look at the condition, how you can, but it's dangerous, it's not convenient, it's not attractive, okay? This is how you, tr you use bicycles in, in, in Bucharest. It, it's really, it's, it's, it's true, it's nothing, uh, yeah. So you, you try to go on the sidewalk, you scare the pedestrian, and it's not so convenient, okay? It's narrow, it's not separated most of the time. You still bypass the, 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 the cars, yes? Very easy. Very easy. Very easy. This is uh, Bucharest. Imagine this. It's, we can do it in Bucharest, no? This is a bridge dedicated only for bicycles in Copenhagen. Very cheap to build. Why not? I want also not only to look at the, at the facilities, this is a new facility in Copenhagen, relatively new, but if, if you look also at the urban life, yes, you see the environment, it's, it's for people, you see it. So this is one way of, uh, of uh, doing it. And this is another way, look at how drivers give priority to cyclists. They don't need to be uh, trained by, 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 by traffic signals. Cyclists have priority. First they cross, then driver continue. Compare their facilities. We can't have it in, in Bucharest, you think? Definitely we can. We have wide streets. And it's much cheaper than, than metro. So I, I really think that this is one of the uh, f top priority in the short term to introduce such a a cycling uh, network. We already discussed about integrated public transport and integrated ticketing. I just want to say one thing. There are many poor people in Bucharest. If you introduce integrated ticketing system, practically you lower the fare and then you increase their mobility. We, we, there, there is a big social exclusion here in Bucharest. You see in the mobility level. So in order to increase mobility, in order to increase financial activity, we need to introduce this uh, integrated fare. And one more thing, and there are many more short term, but I would like to focus on, or just to highlight, parking, on-street parking. You have to do it, and you are lucky now in Bucharest. And the reason you are lucky because you did not invest in any technology. So you can jump now to the latest 21st technology, introduce real-time information for on-street parking. It's available, very easy, you can do it, because you are not invested in any other technology. It's self-financing, actually more. You can finance everything else with the income you are going to get from uh, uh, parking management. Uh, we calculated it, we, in the report we can, we can show it, but it's... In, now, I will be blunt. I don't think European community or anybody else should give grant to Bucharest if Bucharest is not, is not adopting a parking management strategy. Why to do it? Okay. What about medium-term public transport? This is uh, something uh, maybe extreme, but similar thing happened to me this morning when I just crossed the street from my hotel. 
okay? The tram is stuck in the traffic for a long time. It's stuck in the traffic to cross the street, and the tram, the, the same tram, was stuck in traffic because everybody is just crossing the, the, the non-protected... Uh, this is it. I don't know how long it took, but, but this, is, this is the situation, okay? Do you think it can be better? I think so. So I was lucky to be involved in uh, the development of the Jerusalem Light Rail, which is uh, not only a transport project, but actually it's an urban integration project. So we had a worse situation than in Bucharest, in the city center, much worse. Uh, resident was declining, commerce was declining, air pollution, and, and we decided to introduce a light rail. So when you introduce a light rail, protected, guarded, uh, then something that we, we highly recommend slowly, slowly to move into Bucharest. First, to, to separate the current trucks from the other truck. They should not block the, the, the trams anymore. Uh, and then to integrate it into the urban environment, you can get many, many benefits of... of uh, you can do it in Bucharest as well. There are many uh, other short-term, uh, long-term uh, and, and medium-term investment. We are running out of time. Definitely we can do uh, good, good things in Bucharest. Because of the, the, the current worst condition, I think we are lucky as a consultant that everything we propose have a good chance to influence. Will it be possible to, to implement? I don't know. It's, it's, it's time to. Thank you very much.